In recent events, the arrest of Chioma Okuli, a young wife and mother of Verisco Foods, has brought attention to the potential abuse of Section 24 of the Cyber Crimes Act in Nigeria. Chioma found herself in police custody after a Facebook post she shared saying she found Erisco Foods tomato paste too sugary. Erisco Foods Limited, a prominent player in the Nigerian food industry, allegedly responded with both legal and illegal action. She has been sued for defamation, but also arrested for crimes under Section 24 of the Cyber Crimes Act. The constitutionality of Section 24 of the Cyber Crime Act has been called into question, as some argue that it, it contradicts Section 39 of the same constitution, which provides that every person shall be entitled to freedom of expression, including freedom to hold opinions and to receive and impart ideas and information about without interference. The National Security Advisor, Malam Nuhu Ribadu, has said the federal government is reviewing the act. In the meantime, ordinary Nigerians such as Chioma Okoli are being arrested under a section that was deemed unlawful and unjust by the ECOWAS Court of Justice in July 2020. Adesua Giwa Osagi, a colleague here, when digging, and here is a special report. In September of 2023, after attending a program at a church in the Ogudu area of Lagos State, Chioma Okoli, a young mother, was apprehended by members of the Nigerian police force. She was subsequently detained and arrested. Her purported crime, a social media post she had shared on her Facebook page a few days earlier, expressing dissatisfaction with the taste of a tin tomato mix she had purchased. So when I opened the Nagiko tomato mix, I tasted it. The sugar content was much. The product in question, known as Najiko Tomato Mix, is manufactured by Arisco Foods Limited, whose CEO, Chief Eric Umufia, lodged a complaint with the Inspector General of Police of Nigeria, alleging that Ms. Okoli was the ringleader of a criminal syndicate aiming to sabotage his company. It is simple evil in my own judgment, and it cannot be allowed. If you have good intention, she was proving her case by bringing the sample. By, if I she's not a customer, then we, there's not that there, there is son, there is police to report to, there is a federal concern position unit. She didn't do all these things before she go online. I don't belong to any syndicate. If there is one, let Eric Mafia say the name. She is now facing charges under Section 24.1 of the Cyber Crimes Act of 2015. Chioma Okoli sits and bravely shares her harrowing experience for the first time. Do you normally do reviews? That was the first time. That was your first time doing a review on Facebook. Were you afraid? Very. Were you in the police station? Because of my kids. And I've also had stories of people going and not coming back. So after the question and answer section, they now say they are waiting for a call from above. Because my husband was like, are we free to go now? They said no. They are waiting for their calls from above. And after some like five minutes, they said there's a problem that the order from above says they should collect my phone. So I had to give them my phone and they said that I'm not going home. And they walked out. So my husband now went after them to talk with them to know if it's something, something that we can go come back maybe tomorrow. They just walked to the woman on duty, said, throw her into cell. So, because I was the only female, there was no female person, so it was only me inside the cell. It was only you inside the yeah, cell? Yeah, so it was just me. So I was inside there. So my brother now sent a lawyer to come. So when the lawyer now came, they brought me out again. So the lawyer said he has already talked to them and they said that the order is from the IGP that there's nothing they can do about it. So the lawyer said, I should just calm down by tomorrow so that they will know what to do by tomorrow. 
So we stayed there. Couldn't sleep. The roof was even leaking because it rained heavily that day. I was basically standing on <laughs> my legs were inside the water. I prayed. I talked to myself. It was the rest of I was seeing people, I don't know. Mosquitoes. <laughs> And it was terrible. So I just prayed for morning to come. Freedom of speech is enshrined in Section 39 of the Nigerian Constitution, which says in part that every person shall be entitled to freedom of expression, including freedom to hold opinions and to receive and impact ideas and information without interference. In a court session held in Abuja on Friday, the 10th of July, 2020, the ECOWAS Court of Justice declared Section 24 of the Cyber Crimes Act as vague, arbitrary, and unlawful. The judgment read in part that the defendant state, by adopting provisions of Section 24 of the Cyber Crimes Act of 2015, violates Articles 9-2 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights and 19.3 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. In July of 2023, Malam Nuhu Rubadu, the National Security Advisor, stated that the federal government is actively working towards amending the act. The suppose is enabling my company to close down and the 3,000 people will go. This company was established before Shoma was born. Whoever is that Shoma, 40 years ago, I was suffering for this company to establish it. Now, because of the rent, we allow her to close her company down. I rather, I rather close the risk of food down and fight for my reputation, fight for my brand, fight for my good name before I die. And stop on with my, my right. I don't get with my right. I don't no apology for it. And the purpose with my right. I'm going to do the right. I don't look for trouble. If you come for trouble, I'm ready for you. This she do is trouble. You are celebrating my company. And it's seven years imprisonment, seven million naira, or oh, how many years imprisonment? Three. Three years. Mm -hmm. So why must you go? Because you're a pregnant woman. In prison, yeah, there is a space where you can keep child. There's nothing more that, that is uh, where the uh, most mother there. So if you think you can come and uh, 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 bully me to drop my case, I'm not dropping it, oh. I'd rather die, die than to allow somebody to tarnish my image, I, I walk 40 years to grow. Chief Eric Umofia believes his actions are within his rights. He conveyed his grievances regarding her original post and the comments it generated. In the formal complaints submitted to the police, comments made under the post, which were not written by Choma Okoli, are emphasized as evidence. Facebook commenters, including one named Don Cash King, are listed in Choma Okoli's charge sheet. Mr. Kohli's situation also underscores a potential instance of malicious prosecution by the Nigerian police. They allegedly transported her from Lagos to Abuja and have subsequently filed criminal charges against her in Abuja, a state where she does not reside and where the alleged offence did not occur. They came back around 10. They asked me to come out again. They said that we are going to Abuja. That they've already booked the flight. How many police officers were with you? Two. Then my husband. Then my husband paid for himself. And your husband paid for himself? Yes. Is your husband on your flight with you? Yes. What was on your mind when they were flying you out? In my mind, I was like, I don't know what's going to cause. It was actually my first time in Abuja. So I was like, I don't know anybody here. I don't even know who we will call. I just said, God, I'm in your hands. While we were on air, I was telling my husband, my breast is, is like suffocating me. I said, you'll be fine. I said, I just need to take paracetamol. I said, when we get there, I'll get to paracetamol. It was like, am I smelling? It was like small. <laughs> so when we now got to Abuja, Somebody they called came to pick us. I want to know, like, did you just have faith that you, you know, like, how are you feeling at the point where? When I got to, when we got to Abuja, I whispered to my husband's ears, 
I'm dead. He said, no, you're not dead. Stop saying that. He said, maybe they will ask you to go now and they will throw me inside prison. He said, how can they throw you inside prison? I should stop using any negative words of myself. That this phase will pass, that I'll be fine. He said, why are you shaking? Because I noticed my hand were like, I said, oh, this thing is, is my first time and I'm having this feeling. He said, because others go and they did not come back, does not mean that you will go and not come back. He said, just be strong. So we followed them. They took us to police headquarters in Abuja. They took me to CSP Oliver. Say it's their ogre. Immediately we entered, they were congratulating those guys. Job well done, all that. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, the FCCPC, under the leadership of Mr. Tundi Urukera, the former executive vice chairman, reportedly intervened in Ms. Okoli's case following an investigation and took action to secure Ms. Okoli's release from custody in Abuja. And once we knew she was headed to Abuja, we had a head office in Abuja begin to engage the uh, police headquarters even before uh, the subject arrived Abuja. We also were able to track family members, including a spouse, and we open conversations with them and uh, continue the engagement. On this allegation, Chief Eric Omufia had this to say. There's a, it's been alleged that it was the FCCPC, especially Tunde Rukera, that was able to release her from the IGP. <laughs> okay, can I ask, because you said you petitioned about Tunde Rukera, who did you petition? I said I petitioned to Tunde Rukera. He Rukera himself said it, he said I petitioned to the President, I petitioned to the Minister of Justice. Petition the uh, National Security Advisor. I petition to many people because Irukera's action will, di will discourage more manufacturers in this country. In response to these comments by Chief Eric Umufia, Mr. Tunde Irukera replied with a statement reading in part. Initial information provided and admitted by Erisco support the fact that he did indeed specifically and personally procure the arrest and detention of a consumer. Also, it became clear that his tomato paste does contain sugar. The question whether the sugar is too much is a matter of opinion. These both being factually accurate and undisputed were sufficient for the commission to take an early position in disagreeing with the arrest and detention of the consumer, which is what the commission did. We owe an inviolate responsibility and immutable duty to protect the rights of consumers on both sides of the aisle, as regulators and as businesses. Erisco didn't respect the right of this consumer and even worse, pursued reprisal against the consumer in a manner unsupported by law. Finally, firm regulations don't discourage legitimate businesses. We must encourage and embrace those who seek to explore the vast market Nigeria presents while discouraging and rejecting those who desire or prefer to exploit the people or the market. Ms. Okoli is currently confronting criminal charges filed by the IGP, along with civil charges filed by Arisco Foods Limited. One piece of evidence against her is a letter of confession that she claimed she was forced to sign under duress. Chief Eric Mafia was now saying that if I don't want to write it, they should take me back to the cell. He told the police, he was telling them, yes, to take you to the cell. Yes. Okay. If you do not write, What's what they asked me to write. But it's not just writing that apology letter. I will write the apology letter, post it on my page on Facebook, post it on five dailies, as in on five newspapers, five different newspapers, post it on five different magazines. Then I'm going to give him a bank draft of five billion naira. It looks like 99 people sitting on one person. I don't mind right, somebody is telling me, write it. I don't mind left, the person is saying, write it. I was just looking to see if there is somebody that will tell me, I'll support you, don't. I looked at the lawyer, they asked the lawyer to leave. He's a charge of bail lawyer, he should go. I looked at my husband again and said, please, 
just write this. I said, I didn't lie. Didn't you see the product? I showed you the product. You told me that I tested it and it's no, I should not use it. I said, didn't you see my post on Facebook? Where is the lie? Mr. Coley's lawyer has taken legal action by filing a lawsuit in the Lagos State High Court for enforcement of her fundamental human rights. They have countersued me. And this lawyer said, I'm going to see you and I'm going to put you in. You're going to pay 500 million. Do you think 500 million are afraid of it? Let him come and take it. Now, if God if will say, if God say yes, we'll pay him. He pay her. But if God says he's going to pay 5 million, he should be ready to pay me. So continue more money to let her pay me. Chioma Okoli expresses disbelief at the situation she finds herself in, particularly following another incident where police officers allegedly came to her apartment in the early hours of January 9th, 2024. Around 6.30 a.m., they bang on our door. I peeped through the window. I didn't see anybody. So I had to open the door slightly. I saw two gentlemen. They said they are from Ajiwe police station in Aja. Were they uniform? No. That their DPO wants to see me. And I said, in connection of what? Said there is a woman I sold her to. I said, I don't sell her. I said, hey boy, come now. When you come, you see the woman. I said, I need to change. Because I'm still wearing my PJs. I need to change. He said, okay, wait for you. So I locked the door. And now to got my phone. And now called my lawyer. And now said, Choma, don't open that door. Then after like 10 minutes, we're banging again on the door. Madam, come out. Now why are you wasting our time? Come out. I did not say anything. The children were crying. They were shouting. Who were shouting? My kids. Mommy, what is going on? Mommy, why are police in our house? Mommy, what is it again? After some minutes, through the window, I saw my cousin as he's already here and he was asking them for their warrant of arrest. I also noticed that there was a guy downstairs that stayed, the guy that stays downstairs was also asking them for their warrant of arrest. And from 6.30 a.m. till <laughs> 5.30 p.m. They were here. My kids were eating only bread, drinking juice. When the juice finished, we started drinking water. They were asking me to go. And around two, that guy that said that a woman I sold her to, because he didn't give me his name, so I don't know his name. Now I said, Ma, come. Ma, your girl wants to speak to you. And it happens to be the CSP Oliver. Mm. And now put the phone on speaker through the window here. I said, Choma, how are you? I said, fine, sir. He said, why are you delaying my boys? I told my boys to come and bring you and you don't want to follow them. I said, my lawyer is on his way coming here, but I'm waiting for my lawyer. If my lawyer doesn't come here, I am not coming out. He said, how long is it going to take my lawyer to get to my apartment? I said, I don't know. But all I know is that he's coming. Then the landlord now also came. He said, Madam, eh, I've been holding these people not to break your door. Because they've been telling me they want to break my door. Eh, but since you are not coming out, I think I will allow them to break the door now. I saw Oga. Let them break it. Chief Eric Umofia claims that both his brand and that of Arisco Foods Limited are reputable ones that he has cultivated over the years and that are now under attack due to Chioma Okoli's post. We deserve accolade. We deserve to be respected. We deserve to be respected and given award. Other than getting from government, getting from uh, association that they love to know what we are doing. Yes, there's a lot of powerful people here. Yes. With you. <laughs> I thank God because I'm genuine. A company, a respectable company like this, can be allowed this rant 
to tarnish because of what? Is that the only product she's ever posted of yours? Yes! She you, you never posted this. She never did you the product in her post. Go and check. She never, only my own. So and she, I know, she said she wants to buy other products. Which means, she, why she didn't refer those ones? Why review my own? Go to her post, it's still there. Go there and check whether she has posted, reviewed any product. Why must it start on her own? You know, evil don't have boundary. If you allow you today, tomorrow when you come, don't cry you. Mm. But for me, nothing will make me, I said nothing will make you drop the case. Nothing. Until, nothing. Until court jail me for killing people. Or trauma will face the consequence. I, I help people that want to leave to leave. If you want to die, I help you to die if you say I wish. I just want to be free. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the type of life I want. <laughs> it's not what I want for my kids. It's not what I want. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> In a place I cannot say my mind. In a place that I am not free to say anything. And it's so I, I'm tired. I'm still here because of my kids, honestly. I'm just, I just said my truth. All right, brilliant report there at Desuagiwa Osage. Fantastic job, well done. I mean, I was, you know, so emotional watching the lady uh, cry, Choma. And I just wonder if she's going to be made the scapegoat here. I mean, we haven't really seen any sort of, you know, criminal activity going on with this uh, Cyber Crimes Act, but I believe she's now facing the IGP as well as Erisco. Yes, yes. Five billion Naira. Yes. Where is she going to get this money from? But Adeswa, please, what really did she do wrong? She's not a reviewer, is she? No. She just made a comment. She made a Facebook an, post. An opinion. Yes. yes. A Facebook post. Yes. What, in your opinion, do you think that, I mean, do you think that that <laughs> is acceptable and, for and this And would it have been wrong if it was made by, by a food, a review, like, a, like a reviewer, reviewer like yeah. a food influencer yeah. or something? You know, I think for me, one of the things that is most shocking about this case is that she doesn't do food reviews. She's just a mother. You know, she was just watching, she was just going about her life experience, buying food uh, allegedly for her husband, for them to cook soup, tasted it and thought, oh, this is too sugary. Let me ask people on Facebook if they've tried this before. You know, let me ask them if it's, if this is, if I got something that was too sugary, this is how it should taste, mm -hmm. you know, and just sharing her experience with people on Facebook. And yeah. then this leads to this ordeal. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, you know, opinion, whether or not that opinion can be insulting or can hurt someone's or can business or can be harmful, is something that a court can decide. Yeah. But that, I believe, should be a civil defamation case. Mm -hmm. I believe that Arisco, the chairman of Arisco Foods, would have been well within his rights to pursue defamation. And then the courts can decide if it's defamation or if it's a freedom of speech, speech issue. However, what occurred here is completely different. And that's partly why I'm highlighting Section 24.1 of the Cyber Crimes Act of 2015, because ECOWAS has said it's unlawful, it's vague. People have argued for years upon end that it goes against our Section 39 of our Constitution. That act, that subsection yeah. of the Cyber Crimes Act, has been used to prosecute journalists yeah. all over this country, has been used to, you know, keep yeah. them in detention. But well, this way, if it has not been repealed or amended, yes. will that be uh, the, the, the loophole that the risco boss is using 
to criminally prosecute Yoma? Well, I mean, in, technically, we do have to say that it is the Nigerian police that are prosecuting um, Chioma, if we do call it a loophole, that the laws are still on the book. And that's why we had the Chief Justice of Nigeria come out this week and talk about the ECOWAS judgments that are not being enforced. Because as signatories to the ECOWAS Community Court of Justice, we are bound by the judgments that come out of the ECOWAS courts. So it is. It is a cause for concern that a judgment is given three years ago mm. in a superior court and the law is still being used to prosecute ordinary Nigerians. Right. So can you talk to me about, con let's talk about like consumer protection, because yeah. I mean, I saw that quote from Mabatune Rikera, who yeah. is um, uh, the head, you know, the, who was, who was uh, the from FCCPC. Yeah. What's being done about that? Like we, I mean, we can just tell from even listening to her speak that <laughs> that kind of money is not something she can just pull from, you know, from thin air. So yes. what are they doing to protect her in this right? Well, I believe that within his capacity as the head of the FCCPC, um, Satunde Rukera did weigh in, mm -hmm. you know, on behalf of Chioma after doing um, investigations. But now I don't know if the FCCPC has any role in it. Mm -hmm. I think more so now we do have the National Security Advisor has come out and said that they are looking to amend um, the Cyber Crimes Act. We do have members of the House of Reps who are looking to amend the act. But in the meantime, there is a question to be raised that the act is still being used, that section mm -hmm. is still being used to prosecute average Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And also, we also have to look at the use mm -hmm. of our security um, apparatus what is the police's actual role in this mm. how can a facebook comment result in a woman being flown out mm. of state mm -hmm. and held in detention that's in abuja meanwhile that's very, that's very important, very important. <laughs> absolutely well, I, I just, like, before we go uh, yes. oh yeah I mean, because the commendation is due you know is very much in order for this one because given the the candor of the interview i mean i was tempted to ask her almost like what Choma is going through if you didn't face any form of intimidation or bully because what I what what came out of the camera uh, to me looked like a bully who might have been injured but then who's who's really desperate to you know to to yeah. to do you know what I mean? I mean it's statement yeah. about, you know, she could have her children, you in, know, in prison. In, in prison. But I, I mean, guess at on. the end of the day, though, really, I think freedom of speech is really not absolute, right? Yes. Because she's also held for those comments that were made underneath her post. So By once you, yes, yes. Once, you, once you post anything, I'll yeah. just know that you can be infringing on that uh, cyber Crimes Act of 2015. 20, uh, 20, yes. All right. Well done, Adesua. Thank well you. Well done.